Hi, I'm Talon Longstride on Tarnished Coast in Guild Wars 2. Good morning, YouTube. Hello, and welcome to another MMO Anthropology interview. I'm Amorist, your host, and I'm here with Talon Longstride in Guild Wars 2 to talk about how and why he plays the game. So, the first question that I generally open with uh, to everyone who I take uh, an interview with is, why did you choose Guild Wars 2? Um, I, was, uh, I was kind of a casual Guild Wars 1 player. I was really initially brought in uh, by a buddy of mine who just, you know, ages ago now, I guess 2005 it was, um, was uh, really, he really got into the game, particularly the PvP side. And uh, the main draw for Guild Wars 1 was MMO with no subscription fee, which was just kind of unheard of at the time when EverQuest was was kind of at its absolute height and WoW was in full swing. Um, so it was really big for me at the time. I was in college and I had no money at all anyway. So I you know, traded in some games and bought Guild Wars 2, or Guild Wars, the original Guild Wars, and um, just kind of went from there. I never really, I never really took it to kind of the even the the level that I have in Guild Wars 2 but the the game had a really lasting effect on me the design of the game and the lore of the game so when I found out about Guild Wars 2 coming out when they did the initial tease announce it was kind of a no-brainer I was like of course I want to of course I want to spend more time in that world mm -hmm. um, you know why why would I not want to see what these what these guys who you know had created this really brilliant world by that time you know we were all the way up to Eye of the North I think um, in Guild Wars 1, you know, where are they going to take this? How much more incredible and creative can, can they get? And they've really just kind of, they've kind of hit it out of the park, I think, with Guild Wars 2, so it was sort of a no-brainer. So you're, 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 you'd say you're a Guild Wars 1 veteran who got into Guild Wars 2 because you had uh, really come to become uh, familiar with the environment. Yeah, well, it was the, yeah, the world, like, I guess the with Tyria, I guess, you know, the world of Tyria, I wanted to, um, I, I was excited about seeing where they would kind of take the different, the different races and, uh, and stuff that they had been adding throughout the expansions. And, uh, it was easy because I was already familiar since I already had that, that kind of lore background. And I knew, uh, I knew that going into Guild Wars 2, there would be an amount of familiarity there it was uh it was an easy decision to uh to make to to you know at least be curious about the game and kind of start following it and investigating what what uh what they were doing and it, um, it's a pretty amazing game too uh actually one of the things that i wanted to bring up was that you chose to hold the interview here in the timberline full zone of guild wars 2 and i'm going to pan around a little can you tell us a little bit why you really like this zone and and what makes it uh interesting to you uh i think this zone this zone is really spectacular because it's at the very edge of the south end of the shiver peak mountains and as you go from the north end of the zone to the south end of the, end of the zone uh you pretty much transition from kind of the the snowy peaks and you know light snow flurries that were sort of standing in here all the way down to the very tip of the jungle in uh in the jungle that exists in Guild Wars 2 and into the Maguma jungle. And um, there's just so much, there's tons of visual variety in the zone. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of really fun, uh, really widely varied events. Like in the northwest corner, there's a bunch of Skrit getting drunk. Skrit, these rat people are getting drunk on Norn Ale and you have to pretty much beat them out of the out of the party that the Norn are throwing. And then you get down to the bottom, the south end of the zone, and it's very serious. It's uh, There's tons of undead that are sort of overtaking everything, and you have to kind of beat them back away from a, um, from a uh, fort, kind of a fort that's been set up by some of the, uh, the allies that are, that are stationed against them. Um, in, in general, there's just a, it's a big zone, there's a wide variety of stuff to do, and it's just beautiful to look at. I mean, the whole game is beautiful, but this zone is my, it's my favorite visually. Oh, we've got a bear watching us here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> um, so I'm wondering, wh um, what kind of MMOs do you play on a regular basis? And in particular, because we're in Guild Wars 2, how does your experience in them differ from like Guild your experience in Guild Wars 2? Like, do you? Um, Guild Wars 2 spoiled me in a lot of ways. It um, going to going to other MMOs that are similar, like um, 
uh, let's say like uh, what's well, a recent one? Neverwinter came out. I gave Neverwinter a shot, and uh, I kept on trying to move and attack at the same time. And it's something that I'd grown to take adva- just take for granted in uh, in Guild Wars Two and uh, in Neverwinter. Every time you attack, you stand still, and it's incredibly frustrating. It makes the combat feel very, for me anyway, it's incredibly frustrating, and it makes the combat feel very kind of disjointed and, and less fluid. Um, I think Guild Wars 2, I also tried out, I tried out Terra online, and Guild Wars 2 kind of strikes this happy medium of, I don't have to be, I don't have to, like, fully pay attention to the exact strike that I'm on in Guild Wars 2 combat most of the time, whereas in Terra I kind of, I kind of did. You have to be a lot more careful about your melee openings and stuff that you're leaving yourself, especially in PvP, and, um... Also, I think the animation quality in Terra and the art and stuff just didn't really doesn't really hold up when compared. There's, there's like a lack of cohesion mm-hmm. in the, in the art in Terra that I found uh, that I, that that would kind of take me out of the game. But uh, I kind of always come back to Guild Wars 2 because it's this really great balance of MMO mechanics that we're kind of familiar with, you know, like cooldown based skills and and um, a uh, pretty straightforward combat without a whole lot of jumping around but then they added in you know the dodge and and the sort of streamlined weapon system interface where the weapons govern what skills you have available that kind of stuff guild wars just seems like it's got a more structured combat system um without really growing to that that sort that level of confusing complexity that you see in in older mmos like wow or even more recent ones like star wars the old republic um going into those games like i logged back into wow when the panda expansion came out because a buddy of mine picked it up for me and i took the 30 days and (laughs) and just kind of ran around with him and i remember logging in on i don't remember i think it was a mage and seeing the you know of course my ui setup and everything had been saved and just seeing the ui that i that that existed in that game it made me want to log out like immediately you know but just kind of like what you know this is this is what i looked through to play the game as opposed to guild wars where it's since you know since guild wars 2 it's been the 10 skills at the bottom and you know no additional quick bars i know there are lots of players that wish they could at least move the stuff around the screen that was a feature in guild wars 1 that i even i miss but just the the simplification of the system while still retaining the the uh, elements of that depth with weapon swapping and being able to sort of uh, pick your own combination of utility skills and having those having those options in place, I think it's just a really great middle ground. And it's really, uh, I, I hope, I hope that it's kind of causing people, developers who are working on MMOs now that have not been released, to uh, reconsider going in the direction of those that have come before. I think that you've just uh, singularly and aptly answer to everything that would well, uh, come out in the next question, which is generally, uh, what goes into helping you choose a particular MMO game? And I think what I'm hearing primarily is that between mechanics and graphics, the, there's an experience that we speak about a lot when we talk about how people uh, use MMO games, even socially or, or for fun, and that's immersion. And so everything I've heard you talk about is things that uh, affect uh, the immersion in the game. Uh, how the mechanics don't get in your way and the way that the world revolves around you. And one of the things that I've really noticed about Guild Wars 2 is that the content uh, and mechanics-driven portions are all about producing a story to better immerse the person in it. Are you discovering that to be a benefit in Guild Wars 2? I think that the I think that the direction they've taken, the direction that ArenaNet has taken with the... Uh, living story. While it hasn't all, you know, it's, it hasn't all been sunshine and bunnies. It's not all perfect by by any means. But I think that what they're doing here uh, is so well grounded in kind of the core design of the game. The way that they're using their, the way that they're using the way the game is designed to kind of have these large scale fights with, you know, potentially hundreds of players in the PVE is something that happens by accident in other in other MMOs. Uh, I think many of us have probably seen the. Uh, was it? It's like Kazak does Stormwind, right? It's an old WoW video where these guys train essentially a world boss all the way across the world into a major human city, and the world boss proceeds to kill everyone <laughs> in in the city. And like that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff happens because players are are you know their goal is to you know be funny and and record a video of something crazy happen. But ArenaNet is throwing the stuff in the game just. 
because it's awesome. Yeah, Guild Wars 2 has like the concept of the Zerg, which of course is a term stolen from uh, StarCraft, a species of aliens who have a tendency to spend, send uh, honk tons of, of units after a target. And in Guild Wars 2, we get really used to 20 or 30 people all bunching together to jump on a world boss. Right, the um, the notion of of a and for for me like it, the Zerg is kind of a derogatory mm-hmm. uh, like players players use it sarcastically and, <laughs> and in a in a way intended to sort of belittle the content, but there's not another game where you can really say I showed up and there were already fifty people attacking this thing or there were already a hundred people spread across the zone attacking this thing. Um, there's just there's not a whole lot of games where you can say that where it's players. That that are doing it, especially in a PVE sense. In Pv in PvP, there are examples like um, was it Arathi Basin in WoW, where there's tons and tons of players all fighting for for one goal. Mm-hmm. Or Eve Online is kind of the notorious one, where three thousand players all get together in one system and try and blow each other up at you know one tenth the normal speed of life. Yeah. <laughs> um, and those are those are spectacular, and those games are spectacular. Or those parts of those games are spectacular in their own right, but ArenaNet really has kind of put forth the notion of players all sort of banding together to kind of overcome these odds that a group of five or a group of ten wouldn't be able to do. So in that sense, I think that they're really succeeding and they're doing a really fantastic job. And I think that the kind of um, reward-minded uh MMO, the MMO side of the community that's very reward-minded can very quickly turn that into, oh, I'm just doing this because that's going to get me the, you know, the gold drop that I want, or, you know, the extremely rare thing, or, um, so, the extremely rare thing that's going to, you know, make me rich or be exactly what I need for my build, or something like that, like, the, the focus being on the result of the thing sort of, uh, makes us overlook the fact that 50 people just got together and tried to kill this giant monster in this game. Well, speaking of overcoming odds and uh, rewards, are you part of a guild in this game or do you drag your friends around? Um, I played this game I played this game uh, with a bunch of my a bunch of friends and you know colleagues at my work and stuff. We all kind of jumped into it and uh, as time has gone on, um, you know, they've found other games. I mean, I found other games. I haven't been playing Guild Wars every day since uh, since you know the very first beta event. But um, you know, by any means. But I mean, I do I do play it a lot. It's kind of my it's the game that I that I go to, and the game that I return to. Um, but uh, I uh, I got into a guild that is a uh, it's kind of a it's a casual role playing guild. I really thought I would be. I never really thought I would be in a role playing. I'd never really done it in in other games. And um, the guys in the guild are really just—they're just fantastic. I mean, uh, I don't have to—I don't have to do much. It's not very—I don't have to do much in terms of role playing. It's not very strict. You know, you can—you know—people don't mind if you speak out of character as long as it's notated, you know, with uh, punctuation. But the uh, everyone in the guild is just so good. Like the ones that are serious about it are so good at being who they are in the game and it's added this unexpected level of additional immersion Mm -hmm. to the game because even though i know that you know the the other avatars on my screen are other uh are other people you know sitting at computers or or, you know somewhere else in the world um it's still they're still doing things that i expect their character to do at this point because i've been playing with these people for so long um, a spectacular example is there's one fellow who is perpetually drunk. Like he's not drunk in real life, but his character <laughs> is an alcoholic, and he's perpetu- perpetually drunk. And when he types in in the say channel, he slurs his speech. <laughs> right. So these other people who are incredibly dedicated to staying in character and and they're having a spectacular time and they're doing a really good job at it. And and as long as I don't, you know, as long as I don't break their character, you know, which is very it's easy it's easy to to stay out of their character's way once you kind of know what to look for and you know who's serious about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's nothing to ask me to avoid, you know, breaking their character because I'm bad at role-playing, mm-hmm. for example. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting near the end of the interview time that I have here, but I always like to finish these out with one final question, and that is, what is the most memorable event that you have participated in 
in any MMO game. Um, you could choose Gold Wars 2 or anything that you're that comes to mind. Uh, the most memorable event for me actually isn't in Guild Wars. Uh, I was a long time for many, many years since the beta of uh, EVE Online. I played EVE for almost 10 years, and the most memorable event for me in an MMO is from EVE. And it's an incredibly long and drawn-out story, but uh, it, it culminated with me taking revenge on a corporation who had... Uh, who had forced a corporation that I had formerly been a part of to dissolve. I was able to steal all of their uh, all of their hangar and liquid assets, all of their money, um, uh, um, amounting in almost. Uh, I read something recently about like the total the total economy of Eve being you know so many trillion so many trillion isk, which is the in game currency. Um, and I realized that in that moment. Uh, since I logged off, I had amassed almost one percent of Eve's total economy, wow. um, which is uh, which you know, in combined you know, combination of you know, liquid spendable isk and assets that are incredibly rare or difficult to uh, to obtain in the form of you know, rare blueprints and ships and stuff like that. But uh, at that point, I think uh, a buddy of mine tells me that I won Eve, and uh, <laughs> and that's why I stopped playing. But um, but yeah, it's a uh, I, I, I stop because I have you know, I have a family and and Eve and Eve if you're gonna sit down and play it it takes like five hours for anything anything to happen and it just wasn't wasn't something that I could keep up while I was uh while I was you know working full time and having a family right it's not very conducive to having a lifestyle other than Eve right yeah it's very much it's very much work but it's the best kind of work because it's work that you enjoy if it's something that you're into well brilliant thank you for that story. Uh, this is all the time that I've got, so thank you so much for coming along, Talon. Yeah, yeah, this is a really great opportunity. I really enjoyed talking about this stuff with you. Excellent. And everybody watching, this has been another MMO Anthropology interview. I'm your host, Amorist, and I'll see you in the next interview. Good night and good dreams, everyone. Do you play online games? Do you have Skype? Then we'd love to interview you on Massive Online Anthropology. Join the fascinating thousands who've spoken about their online gaming experience and be the envy of all your friends. Or at least get the MMO Anthropology Geek Merit Badge. Sorry, no t-shirt. See you then!